Hello, everybody. I am the CEO of IRK, and you are watching the best show in the world, Retrobot. Let's go. This episode is sponsored in part by PTZ Optics. Why need a cameraman when you can just do it yourself? Visit ptzoptics.com for more information. It's Friday, so it's time for the Retro Buzz. I know we've been gone for such a long time, but, you know, we're back. We had a lot of things going on, a lot of remote productions I've been doing. I was telling the guys that uh, I've been doing a lot of streaming as of lately. And this guy has been doing a lot of tanning, as you can see. He has yeah. been up to no good, as always. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard there's a thing called outdoors, and we weren't doing show for a couple of weeks. I said, "Let me see what this thing outdoors is all about." Something well, right. You you mistaken Doug's, you know, title for today's show, calling it leaks. For you weren't supposed to go out and look for leaks or take a leak outside. You. Were... Well, where else do you take a leak? Well, I not not. Not there, but at least we have the man. He's actually sitting in the light this week. He's not dark. Yeah, yeah. No bat cave this week. No I was cave. feeling less, less somber, less broody. I figured <laughs> I'd turn the lights on at least. He's excited with Mr. Doug Smith, and then uh, Glenn's just enjoying the sunshine. Doug's women over there, and yeah, we're, we're scorching up here. I, I'm jealous. Like I said, Glenn's in the you know the sunshine. I haven't seen the sun in seven days. It's just rain, 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 more rain. Uh, so yeah, enjoy it, Glenn. It's been beautiful here. It's been absolutely gorgeous, like 75, 76 degrees, beautiful sun. I, 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 I sorry, Doug. It's really nice here. <laughs> so I want to, I want to start off by saying I did not look at anybody's. I know there's a lot of videos out there people have been doing with these leaks from from Arcade One Up. Okay, I haven't looked at any of them. I know Doug's put out some information on on Instagram and Twitter. I've kind of shied away from it until he provided me for today with some of this information. So you're going to kind of get my reaction for the first time kind of seeing some of this stuff. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, let's talk a little bit before we get into those leaks. Let's talk about, uh, let's go into the At Games. So as you guys know, At Games didn't release any firmware yesterday, but they did release it today. And for the actual arcade there has been just a few things minor minor improvements to the ui that's that's not really anything that i think a lot of people were really looking for it was in the pinball firmware and the pinball firmware i know doug you were really excited about this was the eight-way joystick is now enabled for the control deck mm -hmm. control deck was previously table. not recognizing diagonal movements which depending on the game you're playing is is or isn't an issue but is definitely something that was noticeable um so that was a quick resolution which i knew it would be i think it was just probably a minor oversight when it got initialized that way and uh, before i get into the next fix sean says shotgun son says i hope haywood won't be doing any hot tub stream we're not we're not doing any hot tub streams i promise <laughs> hey, you get that. some views baby not gonna do it my we hot tub's broken it's been broken for years if i was working i would be in there right now nolan bushnell style 70s atari i was just right gonna now. say well we'd have glenn do it i i personally i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that the other update that they had uh announced or put forward in in this update is flipper input response time has been restored back to the original setting uh the frame skipping fix has been released uh since 5.33 and it stays so basically they adjusted it to what did i say it was 33 milliseconds they Sounds went back right. to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're going to leave it at that and then there were yeah. some legends mail optimizations but those are the three main highlights so if you guys were waiting for the flipper lag fix you want to download this update 5.33 it should be live now. If it's not, it'll be live uh, here shortly. 
Um, that was one of the big things. They've got some different competitions and different things that are going on, so you definitely want to check that out. Um, Glenn, what did iArcade do this week? Uh, they uh, released a couple new games. Um, one of the games that I do enjoy is Burger Time, so I'm giving that a bit of a try. I may do a video on that over the weekend. Um, you know, they're adding more games. Like a few Data East games as well will be coming to the iArcade. Um, I, I, I find myself playing it more and more. Uh, I do. I'm still enjoying our type, although it's really t also ticking me off. I keep getting killed on the uh, on that fourth <laughs> stage. But I'm really it's enjoying rough. that it's game. It's a rough game. It is. You know, it's, it's, I go back, but it's brutal. Um, but I, it looks so nice on, on the uh, IR arcade, so I'm playing that quite a bit on there. Well, I, I know the one game I'm, I'm looking forward to is one – well, there's a bunch of them, but the uh, Bad Dudes – that yes. game coming out, we played that in the arcade. Um, that's going to be coming out. That's probably in a couple weeks. I, yeah. We're still waiting for WrestleFest. Or, uh, sorry, yes! Retromania. We're still yes. waiting for that. That's yes. not landed yet. And that Toe Jam be, and Earl. That will be a DLC game I actually download. I don't download the game. <laughs> I will download that DLC. Yeah, because you don't have a choice at this moment. Right. <laughs> well, that's also true. But besides that... <laughs> So that's that's something else that uh, you know we were kind of we wanted to pay some homage John John and his crew uh, they've been really pushing getting these games out as options for people. It's all about uh, the experience, yeah. right? Over two hundred titles now, I think. I think they've officially crossed the two hundred titles mark and still growing. So impressive stuff. And the cabinet, and the cabinet, different cabinet art that's available on there. They're all gorgeous. Yes. I really like the uh, that Retromania. Oh, God. It's killing me. I can't get it from right now. It's, really it's coming. Is. It's coming. Mm -hmm. But there's Arcade 1-Up. E3 is right around the corner. I was talking with Doug earlier. He said it was like, what, the second week of June. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be, you know, coming out. And all this week, I've seen content creators putting out YouTube videos and posts and leaks and leaks and leaks. And I've done everything I could to stay away from it. Well, I the first leak, if you will, that I was given by Doug. I looked at it and I'm like, where the heck is Arcade 1 Up going with this marketing? To the who, moon. Who <laughs> who is who's in charge? It can't be David McIntosh. I mean that that's just that's Did you guys did you guys here, I got to put that back up cuz I don't know if everybody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> who Arcade 1 Up? Junior, what love, is man. this nonsense? What is this? You know, I got to say, when I when I did see that, two things came into my mind actually simultaneously. So very parallel, not serial. One was I was a little disappointed. It seems like they were taking a step backward. I mean, they've been building. They did start off that way. You know, they did start off you know, with the grandparents and the kid, a, a kid's toy, toy of the year. But they kind of been building themselves up to more and more expensive machines, adding more higher end components, you know, newer, better machines. So I was like a little disappointed. Like you're, you're taking the brand the wrong way. But then I started thinking about it uh, in parallel, and I'm realizing that you know this is really what Arcade One Up was coming to initially was to bring young kids into these classic games. The parents kind of joining them with it, and this may actually be a, a smarter move, and making the original Ar Arcade One Ups that we're playing now more the adult oriented because they are getting a little more pricier, and making something like this for the kids that are younger. So. Initial thought was like, oh, no, this is not the right thing to do. But then in hindsight, and you think about it more, it might be a really smart marketing move for them to have like a preschool version of their machines. And then, you know, the actual ones that they're starting to come to three, four, five hundred dollars on these machines. So I'm not sure what Steven and Doug think about it. But again, initial thought was a mistake. But in starting to thinking about it, Go ahead. it might not be a bad choice for them. Go ahead, Doug. I'm still processing this. <laughs> That is a funny comment. Now, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm not the core demographic for this. I don't have kids. Uh, so, you know, my opinion on the matter is a moot point to begin with, because, again, like I said, I don't have kids. I'm not buying or looking to buy something like this for my kids. Um, it's interesting, to say the least. Um, that's, that's really all I can say. Like, you know, only time will tell us, is this successful? Obviously, they're going to take a chance. They're trying to diversify the portfolio, so to speak, and get into new areas with consumers. So this is definitely an area that will give them an opportunity to reach a lower age demographic or appeal to a younger age demographic. But then again, at the end of the day, it's still the 
you know, the parental figures that'll be buying this. It's the parents that have the young kids that are wanting to indoctrinate those children into the video games that they grew up in knowing and loving. You know, it's, it's something a lot of parents do, you know, whether it be toys, action figures, video games, they try to expose their children to the things they know and love, not necessarily brainwashing them by any means, but they do try to, you know, <laughs> expose them to the things. And sometimes it takes, and sometimes in Glenn's case, it doesn't take. Uh, you know. <laughs> I agree with the first part of what Brad O'Connell says here. He says, Arcade 1-Up done lost their minds. If you're an adult, just go get an iArcade arcade or Knack Games and be done with it. Uh, I like all three. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm well, not going to... I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, this isn't obviously yeah. made for the adults. This is for the kids, so this is... But, but if you look at it, mm -hmm. the size of it is geared toward, like, one, uh, two-year-old... Well, I'm five foot eight. I'm five well, eight, it, and you can see that photograph. Exception. That's you know, that's with pretty the, big. Well, with the Look exception how small of Glenn, Glenn's hands are in that picture. I mean, with the exception I, I of didn't Glenn, make, I didn't. I didn't want to be you know mean and poke fun, but Glenn, you might have an issue with your pituitary gland. Uh, some <laughs> sort of developmental issues going on. Maybe your you know your thyroid needs some attention because your your growth spurts are all over the chart here. <laughs> so I I. I Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say. I was just gonna say real quick that I owe, I owe P Dub to drink. I will. I will buy P Dub to drink. Spit it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, no, I when I first when I saw this, uh, my first, I guess my first inkling was, why didn't you just make a base for the countercade and say, use this for the the little kids? But then I realized I was like, okay, plastic, wood, wood's gonna hurt the kid if it falls over, but. I think about when my kids were that age, they didn't want to play something like that. Like it, I, I and I get where they're going with like the Fisher Price houses right. and McDonald's and things mm -hmm. like that. But I, I just can't see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe well, I'm completely I mean, well, think wrong. Of, think of it this way, real quick. I said the with it that my girl doll, right? My girl doll. They come out with a pinball or, machine, my American, doll, machine. Or American, American doll, American doll, right? Yeah. People are buying it. I mean, that, that was literally a little girl's toy pinball machine and an arcade machine not that i bought one i'm not admitting if i did or didn't but people <laughs> have bought them so you know it, it's again i said when i first saw it i was shocked i was like no you're taking the, the stuff in the wrong direction but on the other side of the corner just i want you to remember that very first pitch we got from arcade one up when they first were announced it was grandparents and two grandchildren young grandchildren that was the original concept of these machines so actually going back to the roots on one side of the coin and also trying to make more premium, I still have a little ways to go, I still think, but more premium on the other side of the coin. I can't wait to hear you guys justify this next one, okay? Because I'm not saying they're justifying it. I'm just I'm being facetious. But this, this monstrosity, super thin, ugly-looking, trying to pay homage a... to the yeah, original. That, yeah, no, it, it looks horrible. It looks horrible. I actually think thought that was a fake one. I thought that was like someone else's. It almost looks like P-Dubs put it together in his garage. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It looks like somebody that had no instructions, they just put it together. I'm sorry. I mean, it, it looks bad. It, it doesn't even pay homage. Obviously. Well, it does. I mean, you can hold it up side <sighs> by side to a real big blue cabinet and you can see the inspiration. Is it 100% accurate? Absolutely not. Does the control panel you know, not have the extrusion that the original one did, no. But for all intents and purposes, the, the finer detail or the, the major details, shall I say, not the finer details, the major details, they hit all those checkpoints. Doug, um, it, it, looks, it's, it looks like the things that were blown up on 9-11. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's for me, and it's obviously not going to be for everybody, but it does do a decent job of accurately portraying what the big blue machine does. I wasn't a fan of the big blue machine, the original one. I've always liked this standard, you know, just classic yeah. World Warrior Street Fighter 2, the one they tried to replicate with the legacy, even though they did the wrong control panel graphic that I'm still upset about. <laughs> but, it, but you're right, that does look nice. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for other people, this is something different. A lot of people have, you know, been saying, hey, please get away from the cookie cutter shark fin design. This does that. Does this do it too much? That's arguable and that's debatable. And that's up to the end user and the consumer to decide. So we just we just set a trend here. We're going to hashtag this arcade one up 911 cab. 
There you go. Start. Uh, get still it. probably too soon on that one. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> get that. Get that trending on on, twi- on uh, yeah, I'm, Twitter. Yeah, I'm with Steven on this, on that one. I, I'm not a fan of that design at all. I, I don't like it. Pitbull in the chat room. I didn't pull up his comment. It came back. He says he disagrees. He has a blue, a big blue cabinet. He doesn't think it it does it justice. And again, this could be a rendition, right? Let's just yeah. I mean, to it's be a digital fair, mock-up. To be fair, all of the all these quote unquote leaks or digital mock-ups, you know. Time will tell. Will the end, yes. end product get changed, revised, look different, look the same? We don't know until we see it. Yeah, and I, I didn't mean any disrespect with the 9-11 thing, but it does look like one of the Twin Towers. That that was kind of my mm-hmm. that was kind of my verbiage on that. Anyways, let's move along here to this. Uh, I'm, I'm so <laughs> over these, sto- these overpriced stools, but uh, this actually looks cool. I'll give it that. It looks cool. Absolutely. I mean... It'll be seventy nine ninety nine MSRP like all the other stools are, um, but a lot of these stools have been very hit and miss design wise. Obviously, not everybody needs one, but if you're buying the Simpsons cabin, this indeed does come with a stool. I think they did a good job with the design. You know, that I think that's a great looking donut color scheme and everything. And I would probably pay too much money to buy. An eighty dollars Simpsons stool from Arcade One Up just because I like the design of that yeah. so much. If you like the Simpsons, Glenn, what do you what do you think about Michael B's uh, comment here? He says about their fakes; they don't have the decal in the front. He's he's right. They started making all their cabinets now with with the coin decal decal door. That's that's the thing though. Like people don't understand these digital mockups. They don't. There's no date on them. Right. Like these could be right. very old. Free, uh, yeah, true. You know, so. I mean, again, until we see the actual physical products, we see, you know, an actual sample, just take everything with a grain of salt because nothing is written in stone. Nothing is on a retail shelf until you see something physically unveiled, yep. you know, just it is what it is. It's just speculation as, and us talking about what we can see. Take it with a donut. Yep, as my Lord and Savior uh, Overlord DVD always says, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> or take it with a donut. <laughs> or donut, yeah. yeah. Donut. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's let's talk about this receipt or this this so called it does it looks like a receipt. It's not a receipt. It's a mm-hmm. spreadsheet of some sort, right? With a circle yeah, so three ninety nine. This popped out earlier in the year, and this is when people finally discovered, hey, the legacy cabinets are real. This is going to be the price point and everything, and that's what everybody was focusing on. That right there, were circled. Uh, if you had a keen eye, you would look down on the rest of the receipt, and it's not actually a receipt. This is a you know a UPC listing and a. Uh, retail establishment. If I was a betting man, I would say Best Buy just because that's kind of what it looks like to me. But yeah. if you go down, we see the junior listing. So we got like a Batman yep. Junior, $179.99, Disney Princess Junior. So that was part of some UPC coded leaks that discovered themselves on the internet this week as well. Uh, Batman Junior was noticeably missing from what has been put out there doesn't mean they're making one doesn't mean they're not making one it just isn't out there but this kind of matches up with the exact same price point and this kind of was our first foray or heads up that they were going to work to be making those arcade one-up junior machines that glenn's face is so eloquently plastered on in the promo images that's right i want to know how you manage that You, you know scott and i are good friends that's that's how you're going to defend which, yourself. Which, that's that. that's the thing. Like I've been, you know, campaigning since day one to get my face on the box to replace those, <laughs> you know, those cookie cutter Photoshop guys they had on all those Gen One and Gen Two machines. And lo and behold, here comes Glenn, still in my thunder, and he's now the spokesman for Arcade One Up Junior. I am. It's you know, it's about the face, man. Doug, sorry, Doug. You need this on those. <laughs> yeah. So for this this next leak, I have to say, I am not a huge tron fan but we know glenn is yep. i would buy this cabinet it Absolutely. looks it looks awesome yep, yep. i i, and, I you mean, know they, hopefully this is this is something like i said that they have to do they're going to make the pressure the fisher price type of machines for the kids the more expensive ones have to more closely match the look of the machine and i think personally is a again like doug would say it's a perfect no but it's a really nice rendition of this is how it's going to be kind of like design of that tron cabinet the joystick if that's what they're using it looks pretty good the color looks uh very very good on it i see the spinner on there and i did notice on the bottom it says tron and tron uh disc of tron mm-hmm. which was the sequel now in regular tron you had a regular spinner 
but in Disoftron, it was a spinner with a push and pull mechanism. And that was a slightly different style spinner. Like, I don't know if they're doing that in this one. You can still play Disoftron without it. It's not like it's a, it's a deal breaker. But overall, just the look of this cabinet, I mean, I have built my own. Now, I did that already. But it's a beautiful looking cabinet, man. I'm, that would be a hit. I think if they put that one out, anything close to that, and the emulation is done by like Code Mystics, I think that one will sell extremely well. And mm-hmm. it's Wi-Fi enabled. I think pretty much for leaderboards, I don't think, or like uh, patches. You right, know, but that's, I'm that's saying Code Mystics might be involved. All in these cabinets they're showcasing Wi-Fi symbols above them. From what I briefly yeah. looked through them when you when you sent them, but. I hope they do the purple glow on the inside, and it's not something you have to add because I would definitely, mm-hmm. I would definitely do that. But it just, it just yeah. calls your name, and I hope the quality of the joysticks, the quality that you have with your Tron stick. Otherwise, I'm replacing and it. And if out not, with we'll that. be more than happy to have you replace them. I was just gonna go, say go. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll replace it out, and I, I would actually <laughs> like one of the spinners, the glowing spinners, to put in that. I would, I would take if if that other. But I gotta say, they're like they're on the legacy cabinets, the new ones, the spinners they have. Or free flowing spinner, you know, much better than they had in the original Asworth machine. So they're doing a better job with that. The joysticks have also gotten better. So I think you may not have to replace it. Of course, I wouldn't mind if you did. But I think by just looking at it, I think that they're gonna have a really nice design cap there. And if the price is anything close to what we've been seeing, I can I can accept that if it's got Wi-Fi enabled, if it does have a glow in it. I mean, Tron needs to have a glow. If it doesn't glow in there, it's gonna yeah. be a huge hit to that machine. Yeah, perfect world scenario it would be UV light reflective, you know, yeah. decals inside. Uh, cost prohibitive, probably. So we'll probably just end up with LED strips inside. But either way, that's close enough, in my opinion. You get that nice ambiance, you get that glow, um, especially if the, the joystick lights up as well. Let me ask you guys something, because obviously, and I want everybody in the chat room to think about it. Some other, There's some new content creators. There's a lot of people out there that are, Buying these things, reviewing them, creating content with them. Who are they going to get to review these? Well, obviously um, me. I mean, yeah, Glenn, well, Glenn's <laughs> tall enough. Glenn, uh, Doug, you, you yeah. might get up to your ankle. Um, but, like, you can see there's even a stool for, for these for these kids with it, the bigger buttons. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's going to come all already put together. That's the way it looks. Even well, and, and look at this picture here and the one that I took with it. You, know, you can see the sides are completely different. <laughs> the other one, the other one, the sides looked all plastic, which I thought would probably have been better than any wood here. Uh, I'm kind of, ho- I'm actually hoping this is all plastic and none of it's wood, personally. Do we have any idea? Is this like a seven or eight inch screen that's on this kind of like similar to what is on the countercades? I mean, just How logistically we- speaking, you know, from a cost cutting standpoint you would think that you would stay you know in line with the SKUs and the units and the screens you already have available to you especially with component shortages and prices going through the roof so i would think that they would want to repurpose that already accessible screen size that they're using in other models and yeah. probably use those but again that's just speculation and i'm, I'm going to guess it's probably going to be the countercade style screen in there it's not going to be the full that's kind of what it looks like screen. but if you look at this one with cole standing next to it um, it it's it looks like a it bigger look screen. Good. It lo- yeah. almost looks like the one yeah, from the wall look, cage. Yeah, but look at this and look at the side. Look at the other picture. There, this that could have been just a photographic prototype. One of these has got to be more close to the real thing. This one looks like plastic sides. The other one looks like wood. Right, sides. right. But look at the size mm-hmm. of the screen on this one, though. The size of the screen I'm on saying, this that's, looks yeah, like counter case. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that's not gonna be the screen that's used. I think it's too big. And you also have to keep in mind these things are digital mockups, and that's a Photoshop child. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, that's Cole. After mm-hmm. Glenn threw him out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, he's taking it Cole. in stride because he's still got a smile on his face. Because <laughs> he, he finally... <laughs> mm-hmm. uh This other one, I, I I didn't know there was a Paw Patrol uh, game, but the you know I, I'm sure it'll sell for people that collect Paw Patrol and and even some of the yeah, kids. There's see, a lot of kids that like it. If you look at this one specifically, I yep. mean, look at the screen yep. size on this one. This it's, one looks yep. extremely small. So that kind of gives you an idea that, again, these are just digital mock-ups that somebody threw together um, for presentation purposes. <laughs> Wolf and us is like arcade one-up for pets is next. Uh, Do you yo, think those stools, those stools will go for 79 bucks? No, they'll, they'll, they'll come with it. 
they'll think? come bundled in there for sure oh absolutely there's no I, i'm kidding they're not going to sell kidding. that separately that that little baby <laughs> school is going to come with the arcade one up junior and and also the pallets the here's mm -hmm. here's what the packaging could look like if it is if it mm -hmm. is indeed this is the final prototype which would fall in line with what glenn was saying being all plastic side um that would be the safest bet in my opinion yeah. for for a kid and this would make parents happy because yes. no assembly required. Literally, just right. take the bottom off the packaging, plug it in, or do whatever, and it's it's good to go. There's another unit that I'm gonna pull up here that I've actually been screaming for since I started playing uh, with the arcade one ups. And this mm -hmm. this Simpsons, and I'm assuming it's got Simpsons bowling on it because it's got the trackball in the middle, which would have to be replaced because I'd want it to light yep. up blue. Mm -hmm. um, or green, but this is a must buy for me. I would actually, even if I ran out of room, I would, I would sell my NBA jam cabinet for this because this to me is worth more than the NBA jam cabinet. I'm not an NBA mm -hmm. jam, huge fan. It's been probably the most requested machine from arcade one up. It's that machine right there. So, you know, Dylan's saying $600 for Simpsons is insane, but you know what? For that machine, I would pay $600. I, I probably sound like yeah. a, a tool, but I mean, that's honestly the truth for that machine. Yeah. But I mean, also those prices, I'm, I'm assuming again, this is just assumption and speculation type of thing. A lot of the, the prices listing that were found online that were starting to creep up in that $600 range. Number one, I fully anticipate them to come with a riser, a light, light up marquee, a stool, um, some silly light up deck protector, probably uh, Wi-Fi capabilities. So you've got added bundles there. Plus again, cost of components have went up and unfortunately right. most of these businesses are forced to pass that you know increased cost onto the consumer uh, a shipping container right now average price is going from four to five thousand dollars so all right a lot of companies are not willing to eat that you know in their bottom right. line they got to you know incorporate and build that into their price structure and if that means they have to raise the price fifty dollars hundred dollars then i mean it is what it is all you can do is either a support the product buy it or be say too rich for my blood and walk away doug made a really excellent point we didn't talk about was that the prices of wood plastic and yep. electronic components everything shipping has really gone up some in some cases doubled so you can't really fault arcade one up or any of these manufacturers for price increases it's so it's not their fault it's just the way it is earth monster wants to know if there's uh what, what we need to see the actual control deck layout and and also is there a deck protector yeah. for it um, oh, there'll be there'll be a deck protector for sure. They're no, no, for the backwards. for the little baby ones. Oh, <laughs> I think it was I think he's joking around. Um, gotcha, gotcha. But I want to show something real quick before we move on from this. If you look at the riser, this arcade one up. If you're watching this show, these are how all your risers should look. This yep. you hit it yep. out of the park. Get the logos off the risers. Get them off. This is this is, and I think the chat room would agree. Doug, Glenn, would you agree? This is the way the riser should look with the cabinet to make it look yeah. unified. And the colors are right. I hate the it. The colors right. man with yellow and then black. So this is, I agree. I totally agree. That is the way it should be done. Yeah, I mean, perfect world scenario, I would like to see the riser cohesively blended in with of the course. side panels of the arcade. But second to that, I like when the colors line up on these side panels. They've done a couple of their Pac-Man releases where it's almost like they rotated it 90 degrees the wrong direction where you had the front panel matches the side panel. But when you have right. the front panel of your riser, obviously it doesn't you know, cohesively go with the, the color scheme. So yes, please keep the cohesion of these side panels if you're going to do artwork on the bottoms or colors on the bottom of these risers. I think even with Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct, the bottom of it was black. I seen the mock-ups of that earlier. It had logos on. Get them off. Make it just mm -hmm. that cab that I want to buy. I was more of a Killer Instinct fan than I was Mortal Kombat. That one I would buy. But I, but I wanted to. I was contemplating not even putting the riser on or flipping it around so it's all black, you know, just to make it look the way it should. And the people in the chat are saying the same thing. They're like. Mm -hmm they like the way it looks unified and i, and I think yep. the, the the slender at the bottom and it gets wider when it gets to the control deck and then it kind of sh straightens out i don't know if anybody took notice of that it's not the same as if you're looking at the nba jam cabinet and this is a unique cabinet design look at the, how wide the base is and then it gets narrowed back to the what the 17 inch screen 
and then it just kind of tapers out again for the marquee. It has that yeah. like cartoonish but design. Do we know because it's a it digital... looks like it could be a 19-inch screen. Look at that. I mean, it maybe could they're be. not doing a 17. Maybe they're going to a 19. But, or maybe the person that designed this mock-up was just really lazy and it was a Friday afternoon job and they were trying to go home. <laughs> but like, it looks good. Said, little little <laughs> things like that. Like these things weren't meant for public consumption. These Doug, things were Doug, to, you know, gauge we're speculating retailer here. interest. Let us let us let us believe this. We're speculating. Okay. Right. You have to let us live right. a little, Doug. That's we know I'm they're not going to give us what we I'm want. I'm sorry. I'm always trying to educate and inform. I, we're not saying you're wrong. We're just yeah. trying to say, let us. This is probably the Maybe. only time we're going to see yeah. the way these cabinets should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Final cabinet here, uh, at least of what we've gotten with the leaks. Mm -hmm. The Miss Pac Man. And. My personal response to this is I don't know how I feel about it. I wasn't a fan of the wood grain one, and I know it's the original Pac-Man. For my collection, I already have the yellow, and I have the, the original blue Miss Pac-Man. What is everybody's thoughts on this? I mean, I just I'm just thanking God happy. they made a Pac-Man machine. I, I, I just need a Pac-Man Well, we knew machine. that. We, we, we predicted that at the beginning of the year. We said there's guaranteed to be 50 more Pac-Man machines. We already said yeah, that. I mean... Everybody had to know this was coming. It's the 40th anniversary of Miss Pac-Man this year. It's also the 40th anniversary of Galaga. So don't get shocked if you see some more Galaga. But I mean, it's, you knew you knew this was coming. Everybody was demanding Miss Pac-Man for years, and you finally got Miss Pac-Man after you got 17 versions of the original Pac-Man, including a 40th anniversary. Doug, we wanted one, one version. That was it. That's all we needed. Well, in case you missed the 16 other versions, because there's always people complaining about stuff selling out and they can't get it, here's your 20th opportunity to get a Pac-Man cabinet. I hate to say it, but it's kind of like that with Burger Time, too, now. It's like everybody's, you know, there's always more Burger Time. Uh, they, the chat room is saying the same thing. Uh, Wolfano says, what about Smash TV? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Smash TV I mean, would have been a good one. I think people already know this, but, like, there's a reason Pac-Man gets recycled 20,000 times. It pays the bills. If you want to see all these cool light gun driving cabinets, things like that, it's because of these Pac-Man cabinets that keep selling and selling well that keep getting released. It allows Arcade 1-Up to do R&D and make those things. So as much as we like to scoff and poke fun and say, oh, my God, another Pac-Man, it pays the bills. Sure. Oh, And, and obviously we're all good fun here. Mm -hmm. But uh, Prince Malcolm says, so... Is the cab going to have Simpsons Bowling, Simpsons Wrestling, maybe, and even no. the arcade game? I would say it's a safe bet based on seeing There's the control There's a trackball on it. Trackball on it. Yeah, Simpsons Bowling for sure. I mean, that's the only reason it it's makes It's a mock-up. It, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Which is good because it adds to the replayability of that cabinet because Simpsons, the arcade game, is great as a beat-em-up, but you can only play through it so many times before you get bored of it. Right. You can go play bowling and have loads of fun. Simpsons uh, Wrestling would require way more buttons than it's on that mock-up. Plus, it's not really a great game, honestly. So somebody else is saying uh, Simpsons uh, Tapper? Which is uh, a fan-made game, so I don't know how you right. le legally do that. Yeah, they, they they would have to put that on. But If they I, want to really want to sell that cabinet, the Bart versus Space Mutants on there. Classic game. I also saw somebody else posted earlier. I saw it on Instagram on the hashtag Arcade1Up. Somebody posted, I can't grab it real quick, but I, I'm sure everybody's seen it, a Turtles in Time cabinet. Yeah, so Not... there's another thing. Um, part of their UPC code leaks, so to speak, that had basically their entire menu for the rest of the year. Um, there was a $600 Turtles in Time cabinet. It makes you go, oh, okay, they're reissuing or re-releasing the Ninja Turtles cabinet. But then the $600 price point makes you go, huh? So... You can do pie in the sky wishful thinking. You can say, oh, cool, maybe we're getting four stools and maybe we're getting Shredder's Revenge, the new game that hasn't came out yet that got announced. But then again, that's also very wishful thinking because they would essentially have to upgrade their PCB hardware pretty considerable over what has already been used and what is existing in the current Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade cabinet. But for those of you that missed out on buying the Ninja Turtles cabinet, you get another opportunity. Downside is it's $600. I, I don't know if I would buy it unless it had that new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. I like the original look of the turtle cabinet. Um, 
it it resembles the original. Mm -hmm. But uh, you start getting in these four player games and you start running out of room, right? You got to yeah, make choices. They take up even more space, especially when you put them side by side. And mm -hmm. with the Simpsons bringing that in, either I have to use that and trade it out with NBA Jam or find another place for it, which I probably could. Um, but somebody that, say, has a lot less room, mm -hmm. are they going to take a chance, buy the new Turtles one, and not be able to sell their old one because of the deck size? I don't know. I mean, it's everything's you know up in the air. Uh, wishful thing, I just really hope they somehow figured out a way to put the new Shredder's game on there. If not, I already have plans to convert my existing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinet, connect it to a Switch, and then play that game that way. Yeah. Um, plus, it would convert my four-player into a two-player and save me some space. So, I I just I don't know I I don't we didn't really show maybe we did see it but maybe I didn't pull it up but they said about shipping for this is not going to be if we're lucky right guys it's maybe. November, December of this year for these cabinets. If all of them come to fruition or if it's like NBA Jam mm -hmm. that they showed it a year before it was actually launched, um, you know, we don't know that at this point. You know, they might come out at E3 and announce two of all those cabinets that we've seen, and that's all you get until next year's CES. We, mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things, like, they know at this point it's better safe than sorry as far as ETAs, um, especially in how volatile the shipping industry is right now. Even if you have the money to pay those exorbitant shipping container prices, still doesn't necessarily mean your stuff's going to show up when you want it on time and you're going to be able to get it out and distribute it across the entire country. Um, so take all the ETAs you see with a grain of salt. Currently, that UPC listing that's floating around, it's showing – about five, six items for late September release, which is kind of in line with what we've seen in years past. So I would speculate that those items are the most likely to be officially announced at E3. And then probably your, you know, your feather in the cap item that isn't, you know, supposed to come out until the end Christmas time, because they always have that one big item that they say, Hey, you know, mark your calendars. This is going to be our big fall holiday item. Let me ask you guys something. With all these cabinets released, did you take notice that they left out any kind of light gun games after coming out with Buck Hunter? And people have been screaming that they want all these different light gun games. We've seen it here in the chat room previously. Glenn, why do you think they haven't released or haven't even put anything in there? And, and Track and Field was another one that they, they talked about doing. No light gun games, no mention of it. Well, there are still a ton of machines to come out. They have a lot of years ahead of themselves. They're doing very well. Just got to come in time. They can't release everything at once. You know, they have their light gun game. You know, they have some RD in there. I'm sure they will come out. Terminator 2, Judgment Day, uh, other games along those lines. It'll come out. Um, just not yet. I mean, people, mm -hmm. no matter what they would show, to, no matter what they showed, someone else is going, why didn't they do this? It's just the nature of things. I'm still, I'm still waiting for Scramble. Berserk, Crazy Climber, <laughs> you know, the classics, Ladybug, Venture. And you will, you will be waiting in that chair yes. until the end of time for yes. those to come. Which, yes. is, which is really sad because those are really good classic games. They really are. And I'm sure the lacing fee on that <laughs> has got to be very inexpensive. But they're, they're uh, great games. I was about to say, at this point, I'm willing to bet the licensing fee for games like Ladybug, they will pay you to put their game in your machine. <laughs> so I think Jeff Rainwater nailed it. He said because light, he, they realize light gun games suck on a 17-inch screen. He could be onto something. They won't come out. Maybe, say that. Maybe they're redesigning it. Maybe they're, you know. That's a good point. They wanted to. Maybe they had 20-inch screens all set and done, and then the component shortage came up, and that price went through the roof, and they said, ah, we just can't do it. You know, we can't put it out unless it'd be an $800 machine. Uh, and I just think because the last time when Buck Hunter came out, everybody was like, why did they pick Buck Hunter of all games? I was happy for it. But, I mean, like other people, they were like, well, you know. It's a popular game, well, just like Golden Tee. People freaked out about Golden Tee. Yeah. It was an extremely popular game. You can't please everyone. Everyone's got their different tastes, personal preferences. No, what but I would have thought see. they would have brought one IP with, with some kind of laser gun or even 
golden tee with the bowling like we've seen rumored at CES a year or so ago. And we I know the hardware can't more racing games either. More racing games. Well, we have we have the one and we have uh, Star Wars, which is similar. You know, it's still a racing game space, whatever. It's a flying game. Flying but game. No, race. I, I, that, that's a stretch, Steven. I, we, I don't know. We, that yeah. we need it, has a, to, it has a wheel, whatever. It's a track and field. It's got a yoke over it and that one's kind of significant for multiple reasons because number one very popular game yes uh number two i know specifically the licensing for the artwork on this side of the cabinet is not something that anybody's able to get the original artwork at least other companies that have been pursuing that have not been able to get it so i would fully anticipate that it has some modded different artwork on the side that isn't 100 percent authentic to the original but most importantly that's a joystick lacking game. It's all buttons. Not only is it all buttons, it was leaf buttons, leaf switches. Leaf, leaf switch. So that would be completely new territory for Arcade 1 Up to either A, go down, or B, ignore. Because I'll be blunt, if you put the same standard Arcade 1 Up buttons that they've been using on all their machines and you try to play track and field, you're going to be in for a miserable experience. So I would 100% expect hope and demand they put some sort of upgraded component button wise for that device and that unit 100 percent. well you know what we're gonna do glenn well, we know first i gotta say pitbull great job pitbull i saw that comment oh did you see it i was gonna i was I gonna did. pull it up um great job pitbull so so what we're gonna do is right now we got to petition glenn and his team to make these leaf switch buttons because we know arcade one up is not going to do that of course, I'm, I'm being facetious right here. Now, but Glenn, personally, I find the leaf buttons a million times better than micro switch, without a doubt. So, I will consider it. Well, right, I... how about this? I will do what everyone else does out there. If I get a million likes, <laughs> I'll make it happen. Or, or what? How many subscribers do you want? Get it out there. One million shares. subscribers, and I will make it happen. There you go. There you go. No, but uh, in all seriousness, but I think this is the time, like with Doug saying that, even if we don't get it for a year from now, Tracker Field, mm -hmm. we know it's coming. Right. You do not want that with micro switches. You need leaf switches. Get, it, yeah. get those third party parts out there, Glenn, with his company. Get it out there because even if they don't, the normal people, the people that are going to buy it off the shelf, they're not going to care if it's leaf switches or if they're micro switches. They're not going to care. You say that until you try to run the 100 right. meter. Listen, I get it. And then you're just. <laughs> They're just going to sit there and go, I got to do it faster and I got to do it harder, whatever. Yeah. And they're going to punch through the control panel. Well, it has a deck, it has a deck protector on it. I mean, come on. What do you want? I don't know, man. What do you I'm want? When I, play, kid. when I play my Zaxxon, my Zaxxon's got light leaf switches in there for the fire buttons. It is a totally better, more um, responsive experience than micro switch. I never understood why people liked, now, I guess when Neo Geo came out, micro switches were a big thing. I never understood it. I, leaf switches, I find, are much better. They tend to fail more because it's just a piece, two pieces of metal tapping each other. But I think overall, it's a better, better gaming uh, feeling. I just by looking at all these, even with track and field, it's a unique game. I'm not really a big track and field person. Just like I wasn't really a golf person, but I had to have Golden Tee. It's a fun game to play. I have a feeling that I would feel the same way about track and field. I have to say, if this wave, we'll call it a wave, right? If this wave mm -hmm. comes out. I would have to say that this is a better wave than some of the last uh, machines came out. And, and and we also have to bring attention to this that everybody will seem to forget because now the new shiny objects are out. What about Dragon's Lair? What about yeah. Space so Ace? Was, it's been there crickets. There was noticeable, yeah. I mean, you can make the assumption, which a lot of people already are, is that that didn't show up in the leaks and that didn't show up on the UPC listing and the retail, you know, ETAs or anything like that. The assumption is that's going to be in-house sold directly through Arcade One Up's website. That's the only thing that really makes sense, unless there's a licensing hiccup or a hardware issue of you know actually being able to produce the game on time and get it running and you know operating as desired. That's just my only concern because I mean they're announcing all these new ones. I mean, Glenn, I know you out of all the cabinets besides Tron. I could see you probably picking up this Dragon's Lair cabinet just for the nostalgia of it. Yeah, because it's not because I play it well, because I suck at it. But <laughs> it's, it is iconic. And, you know, my problem, 
I, I don't know how Michael B is doing it. Michael B, the game genie, he's still squeezing machines. In there. I'm not. Holding <laughs> it. He's a genie, I guess. He's a genie. I I am literally. I haven't done a lot of videos. I can't even move in my my space. That's anymore. why you're outside I, of the porch. That's yeah. why I'm out here. Exactly. Right. I can't move in there anymore. But I want these things. So I don't know what to do. Yeah. I really don't. But I would love to buy them. I mean, that's that's <laughs> the one good thing about like new wave toys is and you know numbskull. Because you can get the machine that looks the part and takes up a lot less space. You got to read that, you know, Glenn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm okay with that. Literally, if they went back and said, "Hey, we're gonna push Dragon's Lair off another year because we're gonna scrap the cell phone idea and we're gonna put an LCD scoreboard," thank God, because if you put that stupid cell phone in there, I will <laughs> throw that across the goddamn state. <laughs> now. He's gonna. That's gonna go viral now. <laughs> do not do that cell phone. I've said it twenty times, and if you know I have to say it again, I'm gonna lose my stuff. Don't don't. You do know it. what I'll say though? At least I take my hat off to them to at least code mystics, thinking outside the box, trying to do something. Although I agree with Doug, it's probably not the best thing. I do still appreciate them at least thinking outside the box because RK didn't want, want to anything, and they were like, "Well, you know, we could kind of do this." And they threw it in there, so I still take my hat off to them for the idea. So Michael B says, send Glenn Planamento some random chick's number, and I'll release the beast. <laughs> okay, and by the way, we're talking women, not baby chickens. <laughs> I, I know you guys would be crazy if I have a, like a truckload of baby chickens dropped off over here. No, no chickens. But you know what? Wolf and Oz has a good, a, a good point in here, and this is, this, is, this is the struggle that I've had as they've gone up in price, these cabinets. Sticking only two games in a cabinet for five six hundred dollars is tough. So at that point, I, I disagree. I disagree, and I'll tell you why. And Wolf is a good friend of mine. I disagree because arcade machines, three, four, five thousand dollars. You only got one game back then. But those I were real we're, cabinets. Yeah, but we're, we're and we're spoiled now. We're spoiled with Raspberry Pis and and emulators and stuff like that. But when you think about it, as as someone who, if I didn't know about those things. And I saw a cabinet with one or two games. I would have been stoked. So you got to take it for what it is. We are spoiled today, but if you want to have that experience, John, I'll send you the money. I promise. <laughs> you want that experience to walk into a room and just have these these light up machines there and they, and they attract them, playing the sound effects. You're not usually playing. I'm gonna be honest. Most of these machines, I'm only playing the game that was originally number one on it anyway. Yeah. The asteroids machine plays asteroids. I have other machine games on it. I play asteroids. Centipede, I play Centipede. Galaga, I play Galaxian because it's a better game. You know, but <laughs> that's just me. But usually you're only playing that one game anyway. The other, the other ones are nice to have. So I, I, I understand people say it's a lot of money, and it is. It is. But I don't think it's a deal killer, and it shouldn't be because there's one or two games on it. Because normally you would have gotten one if you went out, picked up an arcade machine used, and brought it home. You would have had that one game on it and spent probably eight dollars $900 on that. True. It would have been a real machine, but that's my opinion. But but I, I think we also buy it for the for the artwork, right? So I think that's where some of the yeah. like it, it I'll be it's honest, gotta like, look nice. I, I'm I'm all in for the Tron cabinet. I don't really necessarily like those games. Right. I'm it's, not a Tron it's, fan. It's either. more of like a glorified piece of art to me, because that cabinet, the design, the aesthetic, the lights and everything, it's just beautiful. Gotta have the Dragon's Lair is have the pretty lights. much kind of the same kind of thing. I've got a personal connection and affection towards Dragon's Lair. I can play Dragon's Lair, the whole trilogy, on 14 different devices in my house. Cheaper, smaller, don't take up as much space, but the cabinet design, just the whole ambiance that it gives off. And that's why I think people are A-OK -okay spending the money. This is a, a perfect example of one of those things where two things can be simultaneously true at the same time. These new cabinets can be way too expensive, and they could also be a super steal of a deal to the same type of person. It just really depends on personal preferences and perspective. And just remember, these are MSRP. That doesn't necessarily right. mean that's what they're going to be when they come out. And that also, we've seen it with NBA Jam. I was at my local Walmart the other day. You could buy for $279. Yeah, just Not play the waiting game. We see it every York, single baby. year. There's Not always those seasonal clearance prices. Just wait. Don't don't go. I, and I didn't. I I still have not gone out and buying any of the arcade one-up pinballs because I am determined that they're going to drop in one. price. To, well, <laughs> no, uh, online I I had a couple chances, 
Mm-hmm. Three, I'm determined that it's going to be $399 at some point when the new wave comes out, and I will get that Star Wars pinball. But I'm not paying $500 for 10 games when I can get the Legends pinball, which I have, for $100 more. It just well, makes I wouldn't no pay that sense. Money for the Kathleen Kennedy artwork, I'd have that pinball machine anyway. Well, so, okay. Ha-ha! But mm-hmm. every, if you guys remember, when we started the show a little over a year ago, actually it was a lot longer than a year ago. Longer Where have you been? I know. It's been a long, it's been a long week. We we talked about this where we said we'd be okay paying more for these arcade one ups. Give us the lighted marquee, give us the the decorated the risers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, give us the bells and whistles. And now that they've given us the bells and whistles, everybody's like, oh, well, that that that's costing yeah, too you much. Yeah, you can't too do much that way. Money. You know, you, you can't, you can't. So, and again, the, we tr- don't said it before. Cost everything's up regardless. So yeah. I'm actually surprised they're still keeping it relatively around the ballpark where they've been selling these machines before. Because wood and everything has really gone up quite a bit, um, but he's right. We've also been saying we'll, we would pay more for better quality stuff, and they're giving. They're starting to say, "Okay, let's give them what they want." And now we're bitching and moaning. <laughs> I don't want to spend the money. Yeah, and they did. Oh, I, I say they. Um, the internet. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the internet also did provide um, some new information on a completely left field product that no one had really known about or thought about um a projector cave a projector cave yeah, yeah, yeah. i've made those for years i actually 2018 <laughs> was the very first projector cave which i did with my clico mini cave and i did it in the legends connect so i'm i've copyrighted that name projector cave is my name <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of copyright yeah um arcade one up did patent a projector cade earlier i think it was november 2020 and then lo and behold as part of this entire msrp upc listing leak kind of retailer type of thing uh a pac-man projector cade was on that listing uh with a speculative eta of november of this year and last time i looked at uh the the shipping manifesto they actually did get one on the 19th of may in in the customs port so whether that be more than one or just one for demonstration purposes or E3 re- revelations, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, we're going to get I'm some just... sort of projector arcade, obviously. Again, going back to Pac-Man because it's tried I'm to just glad recognize it's Pac-Man. one of yeah, I'm just glad it's Pac-Man. I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm very curious because, number one, I've got a home theater and I've got a projected screen right behind me. But number two is like, how is it a two-piece thing is it a mini projector with a, you know, a little usb thing and a controller like a little plug and play system i'm thinking more along the lines it could be like a pandera's box type of joystick <laughs> with the yeah. projector built in because i mean i did I, I i built a few of these already in in handhelds and i think it's a great idea and you know rk one can start sending me you know commissions for you know using my <laughs> my technology so <laughs> yeah but it'll be interesting because, like, if it's all one device, obviously it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to try to play a game with a moving screen because that screen will naturally move as you're shifting the joystick. So I would assume it's separate devices, but again, that's just assumption based on logistics. What do you? Th- yeah, uh, see, I don't know. Two piece, I get your point, but then why not just get a regular projector and plug it into your your Pong console at home? I, I would think it'd probably be more of a single type of unit that's portable you could take along. With you but again, Doug and I are both speculating. I guess I'm the devil; he's the angel. Both shoulders on, on Stephen. I don't know. I'm just the guy in the middle here. I'm, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I I'd be interested because I'll be honest. I've never played a projector cade, so I don't really have much input on this. So I'm interested to see what it is and and yeah. what it looks the, like. The bigger thing is that you know, the projectors I've used in, in my builds, you know, they're they're usually the laser or uh, LED, and they're kind of expensive. I mean, I, I I got them on sale once in a while, but if you use two low quality projectors, that could be bright enough in the rooms. So we all washed out, so it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how Arcade One pulls it off, where the price point is gonna be at a point where we're gonna spend three, four hundred dollars for one of these machines that has one or two games on it. People, Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, something like that. That's tied, unless it's gonna be upgradable, unless they're gonna allow you to do DLC to this device to have more games come on it versus the one or two. And and Wolf's like, sorry, I don't shill for any companies. They go with my heart and my wallet and what what a, and what's a value. And we're that's not. what you should do. Yeah, yeah, we're absolutely. not either. That's the thing. Like, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Plain don't buy simple. it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. don't support things that you don't like. Simple as that. Right. Yeah. We, like, if you think the stuff the is too expensive, know. that exactly. Yeah. But here it is. Like, people 
are complaining and moaning on the internet about the legacy cabinets having all these issues. Guess what's selling out left and right? The legacy cabinets. So like, if you want change and you want to force change, vote with your wallet. But, well, exactly. It. And, it. And, and we're not, we're not lined up. They're not sending us cabinets out you know, out the door where we're, I mean, we're in the same boat. Everybody else is, um, with that. So let me, let me pull this up here before we got to wind down here in about a couple minutes here. Um, Doug provided me here with this link here where if we talked earlier about the, the potential release dates, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll pull this up here on the chart here. Um, the, the Capcom legacy stool looking at 1231, 2021. If you go down the list here on the, on the column here, the first column, if you guys are seeing this, uh, the projector Cade with Pac-Man deck, you're looking at the end of November. If all stars align and everything falls into place, mm -hmm. we're and looking at... We also at... got some unannounced things, like some more cocktail cabinets, head-to-head -head yep. cabinets, so we got like a Mortal, Mortal Kombat one, the Infinity uh, Table, Capcom, 32-inch, uh, inch, yeah, so bigger version of that. Just all sorts of new stuff that wasn't known. I still or am interested about. in that if they lower the price. Do we know yeah, anyone 30... who has one? Oh, I don't think the 32 inch one has come out yet. I think no, the 24, 24 inch is what they did for the early Kickstarters. I want a 32 inch if I'm going to do it in the you know living room or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. that's what she said. I want, I want more room on <laughs> you know around it instead of cramming in on. Mm -hmm. So. Because if you, I have an iPad Pro, so if you essentially just double that, that's how big the screen is going to be. I am on there. so sorry to hear that. Well, no, we yeah. we want stuff that works. So, um, so I mean, thirty-two. Uh, there's a couple of noticeable omissions, though, because if you guys remember back to the previous CES, um, we still haven't seen those micro consoles or Coleco Correct. arcade cabinets or anything. No, it's so weird, Doug. Nothing. You no, know it's weird when you, you said that that I did see from Super Impulse. It's kind of weird. Yeah, a that's, tiny that's... Atari that was very it similar to an arcade one. Very similar, identical, didn't it? identical, right? So it's yeah. almost like maybe they handed that off to somebody else or sold that to somebody else. Um, we also didn't get a new new pinball machine. We were all speculating and assuming that that universal pinball machine was going to come out. Right. No, no listing or names on that one, so... Who knows? Everything's still up yep. in the air. Maybe they come and still surprise everybody at E3. Maybe everything that they were going to reveal has already been revealed, and unfortunately all the kids know their Christmas presents, but <laughs> it is what it is. And, I, and I'll tell you what, though. I'd buy buying those mini consoles up left and right. I'd buy everyone. Absolutely. That's why they haven't, I agree. That's why they haven't brought it out uh, <laughs> for you. They can't, they can't get enough shippers on the water for Glenn's, you right. know, usage. And, and I will tell you before we get a wrap up guys, just shifting gears here a little bit, talk about pinball, the new Zakaria tables, the deluxe tables. Deluxe. Yes. I have to say they're probably the best tables so far in my opinion. And, and that's only because I do like the animations and things like that. It's just, you know, I like the old stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I do, but they, I don't know, Doug, they just kind of hit home. They, they, yeah, they play I mean, nice. I enjoy them. They're fun. My only critique is that some of them are very busy. I yeah, mean, I agree. Very that. layered. Lots. Of, I think yes. one table has like nine or twelve flippers. Or what something. is that? The um, is that's the one with the the king on it? The uh, what is it? House of Cards. House of Cards. That one's yeah. kind of busy. Um, the other thing, the other thing with that, I wish, and I and I've already mentioned this to At Games. They got to do better organizing the catalog. I'd like oh, them to order at this point. Yeah, when we've got a hundred and thirty. Yeah, because I mean, like you've got to hunt through them. Like, if somebody comes over and you're like, "Hey, you need to play these new deluxe tables," and there's one on every page, it's hard. Like, I'd like to see them categorize it in volumes, maybe. Yeah, just or no, just give me Gottlieb menu, Zakaria menu with sub menu and deluxe, deluxe menu remake retro. Yes. you know whatever and bada bing, you're good. Right. So there has to be a little bit better way. And and again, back to hiding the menu. I don't mm -hmm. want to, for those of us that don't want to play arcade games on it, give us a way to, to hide that. Um, that, that would be, that would be really huge. But if you're on the fence about buying, I think Doug and I both agree it's worth the $50 Buy those tables. Um, there's going to be more cool tables coming. So as more tables come out, they, they got to do something about organization. But, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to get that in last minute because that was something else that, that was this way. Anything else I'm missing? Glenn, anything else that come up on your radar this week? before we sign off for the evening? I don't think so. 
other than, you know, make sure you guys subscribe to Rexer, subscribe to Kongs, Super Game Room Dudes, you know, just chill for those guys. Like, they pay me a little bit, you know. <laughs> Do you get all the contracts here? What is the deal? I'm a whore. I'm an internet whore. It's, it's plain and simple. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Spooky. Well, I love Spooky. That's, that's a good game on air. Limited Run Games announced... To, I think it was today that the pre-orders went up. So you can get uh, the Mega Man Wily Wars. So it's the first official U.S. release for the Sega Genesis. Um, you could get it on the Sega Genesis mini console. And that was the first time you could technically play it in the U.S. officially. But if you want an actual physical cartridge for the Mega Man Wily Wars game, um, you can get that on Limited Run Games right now. So Retro definitely check that out. Mania. Yeah, they sell out quick too, so don't wait. Retro yeah. Mania. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Why is limited, what is what what is limited run doing? I'm still, and oh. and uh, I'm still waiting for my poster from Retromania. They still haven't That's sent right. it to me. That's yeah. right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Maybe out of Mr. luck on that one. Mr. Mike Herman, you said you were going to send me uh, one. Where <laughs> where where is it? Just Actually, asking. I think Mike told me he was going to nix yours and send yours to me. Oh, he so might have. Mine. He he might have. He might have done that because I was going right. to get. I was going to have Glenn send me his. And then I was going to get it autographed by Stevie Richards and yeah. and uh, Hollywood Nova Hollywood Nova at the thing and Doug you could do the same thing and I'll send it back to you I'll mm -hmm. get it I'll get Stevie to sign it take a picture of him to sign it got but got to have a poster to do it though Mike I want the Super Game Room dude to sign it send it why they're in the game man I want the autograph oh 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 sorry I missed that part. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that actually would be cool. Get everybody to sign it that's yeah, on man. there and, and then frame RGT it. RGT 85, all the guys. Yeah. That is pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. I'm, so, the, I'm the internet whore, man. That's what final, I'm the whore. Final question since the topic of the night was the leaks. Go ahead. Um, Glenn, if you had to choose one of all these leaks, whether it be the ones that are pictured or the ones that are not pictured, what one has you most excited slash saying, hey, here's my credit card. Wait a second. You're turning that one. question on him that everybody yeah, asks you I, all I'm the like time. Him. Well, it's going to go angel. to you next. I'm giving you yeah. time to prepare since you <laughs> weren't exactly thrilled. Okay. Well, unlike Doug, I will answer those kind of questions. <laughs> I think by far, to me, it's like times two, Tron. Now, without mm -hmm. a question, that machine right there, especially if they do the backlighting in some way or a yeah. glow effect. If they do that, I swear to God, I'll find room. I'll find room. That says a lot for you. It does, because I'm a cheap motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's, for you, it's a surprise, because yeah. you don't have a lot of room with it. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I, that, that cabinet is one, again, that's been asked. Like the Simpsons cabinet. I mean, I know a lot of people like it. But for me, like Doug says, once you play through the Simpsons once, it's kind of you, you, you played it. Mm -hmm. Uh Tron, for me, when I was growing up in 1982, that the movie was like Star Wars. It was something you didn't see before. So to me, it has a huge nostalgia value uh, in there. And uh, that would be a total, total purchase without a problem. I guess that's... I stunned that, you all. It's dead that, silent. Yeah, no, I guess that... that puts... I mean, that, that was the answer I was expecting, but good, yeah. good explanation. So thank you. <laughs> I, I'm going to... Even your... I'm gonna go with the Simpsons. I mean, that's yeah. I, I I but Tron Tron runs a really close second. Like I've already said, I'll probably get both of them. Um, but but the Simpsons one, there's a lot of nostalgia there. Like just like if they came out with a Wrestle Wrestle Fest mm -hmm. cabinet, um, those two games. Like I remember playing in the bowling alley, and and I know people get tired of it. I still play it a lot, and I've beat it, and I've played it again. And I'll play it with different characters. Uh, for me, that's just, it's got a lot of playability for me, but I'm also the guy that wants a super ghouls and ghost cabinet as opposed to a final Blood fight cabinet. Yeah. I yeah, love man. that game. I play it all the time. On the, I can get pretty far on it on the, uh, on the, uh, arcade one up final fight cabinet. I have it for the switch too. I love that game. So for me, I, I I'm the oddball. That's fine. But uh, yeah, I'd have to go, but I I'm with. I'm not a Tron fan like Glenn, but I really that cabinet looks. I mean, if it comes out looking, I'm that. Yeah, that's nice looking. Mm -hmm. So it's Doug, like now we're gonna cabinet. It's a beautiful looking cabinet. It's just really yeah. nice. Doug, we're that's gonna cool. spin it to you now. Now you have to answer. 
Yeah. My, mine's hard to answer too because like it's literally neck and neck with Tron and The Simpsons. Like my only thing, and like if you had to twist my arm, which wouldn't be wise for you because I'd kill you. But if you had to <laughs> twist my arm and uh, make me decide, I would probably say Tron as well, just because again the aesthetic. If everything was done right, lights, light up joystick, buttons, controls, everything was dialed in, emulation was great. Um, I would have to say Tron. Simpsons, I love it. It's near and dear to me. I love that stool. Like I said, I'll probably buy the stool regardless, even if I don't buy the Simpsons arcade cabinet. But I literally just turned my At Games pinball machine into a Simpsons pinball machine that also plays the Simpsons arcade cabinet and the Simpsons bowling game, even though the emulation isn't 100% perfect on Simpsons bowling. You know, I, 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 I don't need it. So what I, I feel like I need is the Tron more than the Simpsons. At Tron, you know, if Arcade really wanted to make people salivate, you have your Tron, your Distal Tron, it looks like it's on there, throwing Space Paranoids, and also Tron, um, was it, uh, the Intellivision game, was it Distal Tron? I can't think of the name of that game, but Intellivision had a great version of, I think it was Distal Tron, similar, but not, not like the, uh, the Arcade game. You put those four on there, people would lose, lose their minds, just totally lose their minds if they had it on there. There's a wish list for you. <laughs> oh, it was Tron Deadly Discs. That's what it was called. So it was Discs of Tron, but in television it had Tron Deadly Discs, which was a phenomenal Tron game. I think I think that they they've got a winner in a bunch of different cabinets. They all look nice. So hopefully they if they come out yep. looking like that, I think a lot of people are going to be happy and they're going to buy them. Yep. Um, and track and field better have lease switches. I agree. Yep. The same. Go go get Doug. So we'll we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks, guys, and see what's what's coming out and what they end up doing. Uh, because again, we're just going off of just like everybody else. Yeah. You know, we don't normally talk about leaks, but since this was very prominent in uh, at least with these leaks, they looked legit, right? It mm -hmm. wasn't like we we're speculating. We saw Doug Doug did his homework this week. He found. Uh, the list of pricing, he lists the dates. I mean, when usually when you find trademarks and things like that, you know it's legit. Yeah. So it's not like we're super speculating, but we are speculating on some things. Yeah, I mean, I don't ever really enjoy talking about link or leaks, not links, um, <laughs> unless there's tangible information that is actually helpful to a consumer. So, like, sure, I could show you a picture of an arcade that may or may not be coming from Arcade One Up, and we could say, "Oh, cool, that's great, that's grand." People get excited. But if you don't have any tangible information, like when is this going to possibly gonna come out? How much is this possibly going to cost me? Then it's just a waste of everybody's time because it's right. just pie in the sky talk. You can make a thousand videos of Arcade 1UP, will they make this? Or Arcade 1UP is making this. No, that doesn't help anybody until you have tangible information. Right. And because of that retail SKU listing, we actually had some tangible information to back up the leaked images and kind of reaffirm confirm however you want to use the term loosely and back that up so we felt confident that we could talk about this and you know not be misleading anybody i used to hate that in the tech world when i was covering that with apple because right around wwdc and and all that every news or out there i had to stop looking at it because it would be oh the iphone's gonna look like this no now it's gonna look like this now it's gonna be this size it's gonna be it just got old so uh get android well, I, I'm with you guys. I don't really want to do that. But this was really worth talking about because of the speculation. And there's still going to be more talk. People are going to be talking all this oh, weekend yeah. about it. And uh, the main thing is just do your research. Uh, it's it's great to hear our opinions and others' opinions. But you really got to do your own research and look for some of this stuff. And play the waiting game like the rest of us. We're, we're all going to be sitting here just – this is just our speculation, our commentary – doesn't mean yeah because i want to lot... like a chart for that yeah <laughs> come <laughs> june 12th through game. 15th for e3 whenever arcade one up has their announcements you know like i said everybody may be staring in front of their computers thinking ah i know everything they're going to announce i know when it's going to come out i know how much it's going to be and they may completely surprise everybody or they may not surprise i mean just there's no no way you can know unless you work for arcade one up so just play the waiting game and hopefully what you're you know, desiring to come out actually comes to fruition. Or, or if you're dating or married to someone in Arcade One Up and you want to give us a call, that that'll probably work. Glenn is available. <laughs> I am not anymore. And I'm cheap. I'm cheap. No, I'm cheap. Whore, remember? Internet whore. Hey, you're a, you're the spokesman for Arcade One Up Junior. Don't cheap cheapen yourself. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to devalue the brand, Glenn. 
we, we're, we should just like all the other just like all the other the uh, children stars you know it's what happens we should have had you that, i'm a whore you know just we, we should have had you doug use that as the the cover the thumbnail the thumbnail <laughs> that would have been hilarious that would yeah we didn't think about it but that's right anyways guys we're gonna wrap it up mr douglas smith youtube.com slash cool toy we thank you again for uh Get, putting all this stuff together today for the leaks and getting everything because I had a heck of a busy week. Not that he didn't, but <laughs> he was willing to do it for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man of the people. I help where I can. <laughs> and also Mr. Glenn Planamento, YouTube.com slash G Planamento. What are you looking yep, for? Yeah, right, right there. I'm reading it. No, I'm reading it right there. Glenn Planamento, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Any new videos? I was going to ask Doug, but he's just going to be like, yeah, just stay tuned to the YouTube channel. So new videos from you this weekend? Yeah, I, I've been really slacking, but I do this weekend. I want to do, I got my production version of the version three trackball, which I am happy with. So the production run started on that. So I'm going to do a video on that, showing all the features of that one. Um, our steering wheel for the uh, version two, version three spinner. It's just an attachment for that. We're working on an actual driver controller, but if you just want a steering wheel, we're coming out with that. Um, we're very, getting very close to the, uh, the Tron uh, gate switcher from Steven. Uh, so that's still coming along. That's about it. Um, some more projects behind the pipeline. I guess we're going to work on leaf switches now. Are, we want leaf switches. Are you, volcano buttons. Are you doing any kind of I arcade play this weekend? I actually will be doing, uh, probably Sunday, uh, doing some uh, burger time and going back to good old art type. That, that game's bugging the heck out of me. So we <laughs> go back to... To play in that. So, yeah, I'll definitely do some IRK this weekend. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, I normally I just tell you to go to the techbuzz.net, but every Thursday night I started a show that I've been doing for the last 10 years, but we took a five year hiatus, believe it or not. And we brought it back. New hosts, some of the hosts are the, the, the same guys, but it's called Broadcast Now. It's a show all about broadcasting. And some of you guys that are out there becoming content creators, you want to live stream and you want to learn the ins and outs of how to set your cameras up, how to set your lighting, how to do white balancing, all that good stuff that maybe you've never even heard of, and I'm talking gibberish to you right now. Uh, I know Kongs R Us shows up for it, and Jeff Rainwater, a lot of these guys show up because they want to learn how to broadcast better. Uh, this week we're going to talk about how to set up your guests, how to get guys like Doug and Glenn on a show to where they look good. They know how to do it. but It's a lot of work for some of us. You know, you want to frame, Ow! you want to frame, Ow, right frame here. some people up, or you want to put this guy here. He can't sit in the middle of the frame, and you know, so he, I have to constantly <laughs> deal with that when he's doing this all the time. So these are challenges that you run into as a producer. <laughs> uh, but we we we're going to talk about that this Thursday. Uh, it's at 6 p.m. Eastern to 7. Uh, we're also doing a community show uh, once a month where you guys can jump in, ask questions that Often you may have. Often imitated, never duplicated. Yeah, I'm stealing it from our own show <laughs> because it's a good idea. We I, I do it for work. We do a uh, – the, only they do it every every episode. They have a Zoom, and then they open it up to questions afterwards. But it's too much with three guys doing it, that yeah. having a Zoom. So we're going to have that on Thursday. So if you want to join, you want to watch, uh, tune in uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. We also have it podcasted, so you can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it iTunes and all that good stuff. So if not, we will be back Friday with more of the Retro Buzz. We'll see what else comes out. Maybe there'll be more leaks and we'll have to put some plumbing to that. We don't know. Till next time, guys. Keep buzzing.